Okay, I think in the interest of time, let's start. Yeah, wait for one more minute, 8.31 it is. Yeah, let's start. Yeah, yeah. So guys, uh, honestly, uh, retail, uh, especially those who have got a chance to visit the retail stores in Europe or US, India is uh, taking it uh, <coughs> very fast. Uh, but yeah, the stores in the Western countries, including Australia, are uh, way, way advanced in terms of the application of technology. So we will discuss today that where, uh, what is the state of the art as far as the digital transformation is concerned in retail and uh, where India or how India is taking it forward. We will discuss uh, both the India case as well as the US case because I have my clients in both US and India. So I shall discuss you the what kind of work we do for both of them and where what is the what is the journey, what is the evolution currently. Yeah. So we will discuss uh, these six technologies today: uh, Bacon, artificial intelligence, AR, VR, extended reality. There are different forms of reality. We call it umbrella term is ER extended reality, uh, IoT, Internet of Things, automation, and interactive media. So these are the six technologies. I'm sure more or less you're all acquainted with the technologies. Uh, so what is these things uh, perhaps is known to you? We will mostly discuss about uh, maybe a couple of minutes I shall spend on what uh, uh, these technologies are and then we will primarily move to its applications in retail. So we'll start with uh, Bacon. So uh, this is the kind of snapshot of how Bacon technology works. So Beacon, what happens is the retailer strategically plays. It's a kind of small microchip. Do you know about Beacon? Do I need to explain? Do you already know or should I explain? And please uh, feel free to interact. As I always mention, unmute yourself if there is no background noise. Ask me questions and let's discuss. It should be a two-way communication. You would acquainted with this Beacon technology? Am I audible? I guess I'm audible, right? Yeah, you are audible. Okay. <clears throat> Do you want us to NFC? talk about Beacon, uh, guys? Is it like NFC? Very close, very close. You are correct. So what happens is that uh, uh, small microchips are placed uh, in the store and they pretty well connect whenever the app is opened of the store is open in the customer's laptop through Bluetooth, it connects. And uh, it uh, gives a lot of information. First of all, it recognizes who the customer is and uh, the profiling gets done at the back end. And uh, once that gets done, then the customized marketing takes place, both in the store and in the vicinity of the store. That's how it works. You can, you can see the flow in this chart, how it works. So these are a couple of uh, examples. You can see that if a customer is looking for some particular fruit, say strawberry, it is clearly showing that it's eight feet away. And add for uh, one for a dollar two point five, it is a yeah, pound 2.5. So that's how it works. Or a person is looking at the shoes and uh, which particular shoe is 50% off, they get a very clear idea that yeah, this is the kind, this is the way a beacon works. So what happens is that how Beacon really works in retail, we call it uh, proximity marketing, that's a technical term. So what happens in proximity marketing that uh, whenever it reaches up to a kind of 250 foot radius and whenever our customer enters in that vicinity uh, that, that Beacon understands that yes, who the customer is and uh, there are a lot of other technologies as well. And all these technologies are kind of integrated so again, Beacon doesn't work in isolation. So uh, they understand the customer, uh, figure out the customer profiling, what was the past purchase, when was the last visit, uh, what are the customer's preferences in terms of product services. Uh, not only the preferences, say if it is a kind of a shoe or apparel, uh, what's the customer's size uh, from the past purchase, it figures out. So a lot of technologies you know, work in tandem. And uh, it, uh, it, it uh, gives the notifications uh, to the customers, which are absolutely personalized. 
So that's very interesting. And uh, that's the need of the hour. One size doesn't fit all. If a kind of general uh, message comes uh, to my mobile, that might not interest me, right? So the technology in today's world is well capable to understand uh, who the customer is. And the, not only the customer is, but the entire history of the customer. That can be uh, generated in a, in a fraction of a second. And, uh, and then the analytics engine starts playing once that, even the recognition is also kind of analytics engine. And then uh, popping out the right message, uh, showing the right promotion is also a part of the target marketing that we do, which actually generates, uh, generates the sales. Any questions so far? So how many uh, devices are like kept in a typical store, like for covering the entire store? Well, that can be for a big stores like Walmart, uh, there can be hundreds of devices, possible. Again, for a small store, if it is in a mall, uh, then of course it would be intense. Okay, so uh, data from this then goes to the cloud and- uh, Correct. So that's okay, okay. It goes to the cloud straight away. And at the back end, there is uh, there is fog, and then there is cloud. And in, I shall show you the different layers of the architecture, that how, what kind of data and what kind of processing goes into the fog, and what goes into the cloud. And then uh, the analytics engine at the back end uh, works there. At, it generates the real time promotions. That's the very important part. So that's how it happens. Uh, this is the universal unique identifier. Uh, Whenever the customer is in the vicinity, it figures out whether it is near or far and or yeah, immediate uh, promotion is required. And then the user is here and it connects with the mobile through internet, the cloud services are here. Then there is interaction and then the presence of the information goes, the shop owner understands, the entire store has the information and the entire customer analytics starts from here. And that gets pushed uh, to, the, to the customer's mobile as a notification. So that's how it works. And what kind of information like item information, what all items are available, what special offers for new customers like location running campaign, what is the personalized grading at locations, personalized coupon, uh, navigation support. So this kind of information uh, uh, we do by Bacon. I hope it's clear, right? Yes. Feel free to interact if any question you have or or if it is clear let me know yeah it's understood understood sir cool cool so as i'll give you a couple of uh, maybe four use cases that what kind of things happen say a uh, customer is there say bella now bella has the outlets mobile app installed and bluetooth on in her smartphone and bella is in vicinity of the outlet not that she has entered till now in a mall uh, maybe she is working and then what happens is that we can connect the smartphone. That's how it starts. Then the connected ID is sent to the server, server provide personalized data. And then naturally the notification pops up like, hey Bella, uh, the good shop is having some buy to get a one start free offer, like to try it. And as soon as she nears the store, the bacon trigger an automatic message. So that's how it happens. And which of course enhance the customer experience, improved sales like that. So how, how is it done for any new user? So like for old user, you can provide this personal. It, it can, yeah, the good question. Uh, it can only work if you have the uh, couple of things. Number one is that uh, if you have the app stored in your mobile, that is the first thing. Once the app is stored, uh, even if for a new customer, the generalized offer can be shown. It might not be a kind of customized offer, but a generalized offer can be shown. But the having an app is uh, pretty critical here. Okay, sir. Okay. So now the, for instance, Bella entered the store, right? The same thing starts. Now Bella has the outlet mobile app installed and Bluetooth on her smartphone. And then once she's in store, then hey Bella, uh, discount up to 60% apparels. 
So as soon as the customer nears the apparel section, this triggers an automatic message. That's how it works. So even uh, the beauty of this, that why I'm giving these two examples, they may look very similar, but there is a difference. The difference is that to the beacon, it can figure out whether the customer is near the store or already has reached or in the store. And depending on the location of the customer, it can uh, customize the message. Maybe one message uh, to bring her in the store, and the second message is to make her purchase within the store. That's a difference. There is a huge psychological difference. And sir, that's uh, just to be different. Sir, uh, like, did, while a new customer is enrolled uh, in the, this, this program, so okay. are uh, demographics also taken? Because, for example, in apparel, uh, something like age, gender, all these things matter, right? To send post. Correct, correct, correct. Now, now, see, as I mentioned, it all depends on how much data you have uh, captured in your database. So for a new customer, of course, you might not have all the data, right? So that's why the generalized message are shown. For an old customer, it would be customized. But having said that, I told something very important in the beginning, that whenever I have shown you uh, this slide, I have shown something, I have told something very important. All these technologies work in tandem. Now, what does that mean? Of course, I shall sum up when I shall cover everything, but let me give you a brief. So don't think that Bacon only works, uh, Bacon only works in isolation. There is AI. AI is there to do the face recognition, to understand the gender, and a lot of other information comes up. So they all work in tandem. So it becomes very easy, very easy for the retailer to understand what the gender is, even for a new customer. But yeah. Beacon alone, very difficult unless the information from the mobile, it all depends on when you are giving the permission to an app, what all information you are uh, providing, you are sharing with the app. So depending on that, uh, Beacon might understand, might not understand depending on what information you are sharing. That's for a new customer. But as I mentioned that there is AI, there are the cameras, there are the uh, face recognition technologies which can tell pretty clearly what the gender is. Understood. Cool. Yeah, we were here. So the third use case is that uh, said yeah, is in a big department store and uh, it's pretty normal. Those who have been in Walmart, that's so, so, so huge. Standard response, I can't find what I'm looking for. Forget it, let's just leave. So that's a kind of standard response. So. That's where you know beacons come into place. They play a very critical role. So due to beacons built in store, beacons based in your mapping experience, GPS for your shopping cart, which I shall also discuss even how smart the shopping carts are when I shall discuss the IoT part. And uh, in-store customers can use the app to create shopping lists, see what items are located in which store, their own proximity to these products and real-time location changes as they move. So here, yeah, craft supplies are in aisle K15. So clearly it has been mentioned. If you're looking for something, you can just click on them and sorry, and that will uh, give you a message that where it is located. So that's again uh, a great, great advantage for the shoppers as well as for the retailers that they need not, shoppers need not spend their time in searching for a product uh, and they will not feel frustrated for not finding the product. And whereas, uh, uh, for retailers, it's such a blessing, such a boon. But yeah, they, they pretty well take the customer uh, to the aisle, to the shelf where the product is located. I hope it's clear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Cool. And last but not the least, how analytics uh, is working in tandem, again, working closely with this bacon. So Beacon plus CRM for shopping behavior analytics. So how it happens is that the moment uh, a customer or a shopper started interacting with the store through the Beacons, so brands get to know how customers behave, uh, like CRM records, that what was notes earlier visits, like blue t-shirt in notes, which places unavailable in store at past. So in notes next visit, Beacon triggered the message in notes board, hey, blue t-shirt is back in store. 
buy now. So that's the kind of uh, experience uh, customers are having. So how many people visited the store? How many utilized the app? Saw offers, made purchases, store sections where they're spending more time, frequency of customer visits, in-store behavior, how many transactions occurred, how many people signed up and utilized loyalty program, know about service quality, abandonment rates, effectiveness of marketing campaign. So for that matter, the entire story, entire consumer behavior story in the retail store gets captured through this beacon and of course, analytics on the top of it. Uh, from an analytics standpoint, this is uh, the previous three things were just the technology. But from an analytics standpoint, this is the key slide. Any questions on this slide? So how do uh, these retail stores they decide uh, on the promotional offers? That this is the level of promotional offer that I should give to a particular customer. Is yeah, very good question. Very, 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 very good question. Uh, by any chance, are you been exposed to propensity modeling? No, sir. Okay. So let me tell you uh, this. It's a good question, first of all, and you should know. You should know this answer. This is a very, very important question. So uh, you must have studied in your childhood. Childhood means your first uh, trimester or semester. Uh, what are the STP of marketing, right? Do you remember that STP of marketing? Segmenting, targeting, positioning. Correct, correct, correct. Now, one thing, keep it in mind, whatever you have studied in your entire two-year course, be it in marketing or any other subject, finance, HR, even HR for that matter, uh, all the things are translated mathematically in real life. That's a very important thing you always remember. Whatever you have studied in English language, uh, whatever you have studied in form of storylines, English stories, uh, these are all translated mathematically. Nothing is just abstract English or kind of a story. Now, coming back to this STP part, this entire STP are translated mathematically. So, and it all starts with S. Uh, so, uh, segmentation. Segmentation, this one I'm sure you have all studied, right? You know, customer segmentation through, say, the simplest one is the cluster analysis. You know that thing, correct? Yes or no? Tell yes, me very sorry. frankly. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. Cool. So what happens is that you are creating the segments. You are creating the homogeneous groups from your population. That's the first level. Then comes the target marketing or the T. Now, what is why it is important and how it happens? So even if a segment, even if a segment, say for example, your total population is uh, hundred and you have created ten segments, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm doing it kind of rough calculation or simple mathematics. So every segment has got 10 customers. Now, even if their demographics are same in the sense that their age, um, gender, whatever, their lifestyle, psychographic profiles are pretty similar since they are a part of a segment. Then also, their probability of purchase of a particular product won't be the same. That's a very, very, very important uh, understanding or realization that we have realized after going through the data, after looking at the reality. So even in a same segment, you cannot, if they are not same, if the probability of purchase is not same, even within a segment, then it would be futile if you just show similar promotional message to one segment, right? So what you are supposed to do? You have to do a simple modeling technique, which we called for target, this is called the, now we have done the segmentation. Now we are in the realm of uh, targeting or target marketing. So we do a very simple thing. Uh, probability of purchase, any probability for that matter is binary, to purchase or not to purchase, that's the question. And that's dependent on several variables. So we model one or zero, that's the dependent variable, binary dependent variable, and there are several independent variables, which where, where we captured, where we captured the subtle differences of every individual customers, even within the same segment. Thereby, thereby we, uh, we arrive to specific probability of purchase for every individual customer. 
am i making sense or not so far yes sir yes sir uh, that will be particular to any any one item right if i you are absolutely correct you are absolutely correct you are absolutely correct my probability exactly and then comes please remember all these things work in tandem and then comes or rather along with that works another thing which is the recommendation engine that clearly tells and many a times even the this recommendation engine works first and then the marketing works that also happens recommendation engine clearly figures out that what is the probability of purchase or what particular product customer is more prone towards in purchasing have you studied recommendation engine algorithms by any chance at past yes sir cool cool so you know how it works so it tells that yes these are the kind of probability of uh, this customer is very inclined to purchase that that has been figured out and then the target marketing uh, starts like the propensity modeling starts that what's the probability of purchase of every customer now why it is important suppose suppose with the 10 customers that i have told you in the beginning of the example now within that 10 customers first three have got or any three for that matter uh, has got probability of purchase 90% and above then the next three or four somewhere between 90 to 70 or 90 to 75 another you know remaining three or four has got uh, between 75 to 50 now your promotion message would be very different maybe for the folks who are above 90% you might not give any might not need to give any promotion not required whereas from 90 to 75 maybe some 10% discount maybe for folks between 75 to 50 maybe some 20% discount something like that that all depends on your marketing strategy but the point here is that analytics can distinguish that what is the probability of purchase can figure out and create the micro segments to the extent of creating the personalized promotions got it sir thank you cool cool so that's about the bikan analytics the very very important part these are the advantages we can as i mentioned that personalized customer recommendation i have also mentioned that what are the brands that are using it currently they send the highly personalized discounts how they do it i told you just now the target marketing part the propensity modeling part in store messaging store navigation you can look at the brands simultaneously that which particular companies are using it currently the loyalty programs mobile payments cross selling which includes upselling as well uh bacon iot app for local news uh bacon powered uh, smart shelves uh yeah so all those are that kind of advantages and the retailers are leveraging the power of the technology so with that i shall move to artificial intelligence how well acquainted you are with this ai part what is ai i i gave you a kind of brief about the somebody asked me a question in the first class and i gave you a brief can any of you uh, tell me your understanding about the ai Uh, it's uh, just like it's a machine which is simulating uh, human uh, intelligence in some form that's true but that's how things have been sold that's how uh, ai is being sold to be very clear and precise to be blunt that's how yeah but what does it mean you know you do break it down let me let me take one component as i always uh, give the simplest example is the computer vision so yeah say i can i can see yeah a cat versus a dog i can distinguish between a cat and the dog even a machine can do that so that's the kind of you know computer vision now even if i take this one capability it can do amazing stuff in the retail context and that's what we are going to discuss uh, i shall discuss both the indian example and the us example uh, you can see here in this picture this camera right that's there in the store in most of the stores so that you can notice it or not uh in most of the advanced stores every activity had been tracked so uh, 
I mentioned here fraud analytics. You might be knowing that in the recent past, many of the celebrities are even caught. You know the names, right? Who are caught for shoplifting, right? So uh, things been tracked uh, uh, very easily, very easily these days. Not a kind of uh, any manual mutilation is required, vigilance is required. Now, uh, what happens is that uh, I've given a few examples right here. So now somebody was asking me, like, how can they understand the gender, right? So this is the easiest way. So it can pretty well figure out what the gender is, what's the name of the person, what is the emotion of the person. That's another very important thing. So and time in store, 52 minutes, three seconds. Yeah. Oh, it gets it tracks every detail of the person or the individual. So that's the face recognition part. So even if you are just moving here and this camera does actually track you down, understand understand who you are and uh, every details. The moment they understand who you are and then the it opens uh, to me a kind of Pandora's box because all your previous get gone. So yeah, every details who you are. So your entire profiling of all your past purchases, your preferences, what you were up to, how much can you generally spend? How do you pay for that matter? So again, it means a lot. What credit card you are using? So that shows again a profile you are having. So a lot of, lot of, it, it opens up a lot of data. The moment they figured out this, this one is good enough, who this person is. The moment that has been done. So thousand data points come up. So yeah, coming back to this part in India, what we have done for our leading store, uh, leading that is then, uh, yeah, in apparel store primarily to the cotton cloths, based out of uh, their headquarters is at Gujarat, but they are based in the yeah, they are they are number one retailers in this apparel. What we have done is that uh, we have we have placed the camera in the store not for this face recognition in India, uh, but we have done it for the. Uh, uh, for for how much how many quantities are been are been uh, taken out from the shelf, so that's that's where the definition analytics come. Now, your obvious counter question uh, to me could be, like, what's the necessity? What's the necessity of the that? For, for the simple reason that if I if my POS terminal point of sales terminal is connected, I can pretty well understand uh, how many products are been taken out of the store or been sold. So why do I require a camera uh, pointed towards the shelf. Any answer? You got my question, right? Is my question understood? Yes, sir. Cool. Any answer? Any any thoughts? Why it's required? Guys, please get up. It's 9 a.m. I understand it was Saturday night. Repeat the question once again. Yeah, yeah. Ask me, ask me. So, question was like that. You know, pretty obvious question. So, what we did, as I told you, a kind of, you know, my premise was that we did, we, we that was for the, in the context of replenishment analytics, right? Now, what we did for a leading retailer, what in the apparel, uh, the headquarters at Gujarat, and uh, that's the leading number one in the apparel sector. So what we did was a kind of place the camera towards uh, the shelf or focusing towards the shelf. And whenever the, whenever the, any items are taken out from the shelf, the cameras or the images can pretty well understand that how many items were supposed to be on the store and how many items were taken out of the shelf. So, it can pretty well understand that yes, this is the kind of quantity not there on the shelf and it needs to be replenished. So that's the kind of, you know, AI or the computer vision, that's how it works. That was the premise given to you. Now the question is that, why is that required, man? I can pretty well get the information from the POS terminal, how many items are getting sold. So it's over, it's done. So I don't require any separate camera, separate investment, separate AI technology separate hardware and software investment on it uh, to do this work. So is my question clear? Yes, sir. Or still not clear, ask me, 
I don't mind to repeat it. Is it clear or not clear? Is it uh, based on where the product is placed? So uh, if the product is placed maybe at the eye level, so uh, basis that how the uh, revenue is generated for that uh, product? No, no, no. Uh, my question is still not clear. I told you that this AI technology had been had been employed for the replenishment analytics, right? Now it can fit you and figure out the computer. The cameras are focused towards the shelf. It can figure out what oh. is the level of the stock, two items, three items, four items, the towels are there. And they are kind of leading towel manufacturer that I'm talking about. Uh, so ideally- so time, uh, maybe it can help uh, the store or um, uh, maybe the company to hmm. replenish these items. Uh, at that particular moment only. That can be done in POS. So a person checking out from the shelf and a person checking out how many minutes difference can be. Five minutes, 10 minutes. It's not a big departmental store like Walmart. They have to take one hour. It's, they have got small stores. Yeah, but like an apparel store, not very small kind of apparel store. So that could be five minutes. That's not a big deal. What could be? Sure. So the yeah. cameras can be helpful to understand the maybe demographics of the customer who is purchasing. Not it. really. I'm just talking about these guys. I'm just talking about reference analytics. I'm not talking about anything else. There are 50 other things which I'm just keeping at the back seat for the time being. Okay. Cameras, of course, serve several purposes, but I'm just keeping everything aside. I'm just talking about this guy. Any guess? Because that was my question. Because the question that I've thrown to you. I ask the same question to the management. Hey, man, why do you require it, man? You can pretty well get the data from you. I know that I'm going to have business, but I don't require the business. You can have it from the previous data. Uh, but uh, I think uh, as Rajiv said in before, for example, even five, 10 minutes, let's say it's a Sunday or a month beginning where... Uh, well, it's no big not... deal. That's no big deal. That's no big deal. Well, That's even if there are you know, 10 towels out of that, somebody took out one or two, three, four, whatever. No big deal. <laughs> That's not the point. Let me tell you, let me tell you, in the interest of time, let's, let's go ahead. So that's exactly India. India being India, uh, we have to take the subtle nuances of the uh, of the mindset of the behavior here. So they gave a very interesting answer. They said that, sir, you are very correct. At our uh, store personnel will be that proficient that they will take out from the back store and put it on the, on the, on the cell. We didn't mind that. That doesn't happen. So what happens is that, what happens? Suppose you are from the POS terminal, you are checking it out. So the moment, say one or two towels, whatever, it can be any item, uh, gets checked out naturally in an automated system. It goes, it triggers a kind of order from the warehouse. And then the warehouse gives an order to the uh, vendor like that it happens. So now naturally from the replenishment perspective, it's not that I'm doing replenishment analysis for the first time. That's very much there in all the retailers. Now, from the replenishment perspective, the moment the orders are triggered, warehouse ensures that they come to the back end or the uh, back end of the store. There is a backyard of the store. There is a there is a store room or any store. You must be all knowing. So that comes there. Now that is the you know that's the job. That's the job of the warehouse guys to ensure that store manager is there to ensure that it comes. But unfortunately, India being India, the all the stocks are there. So by record, what is that? By record, you know that, yes, say three towels or five towels or 10 or 20, 50, 100 items went out of the store and 100 items have been replenished. So you are cool. So that's how your mindset should be. Yeah, I'm all done. I, I'm, I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty good. So that's what you will think. But that's unfortunately not the case. They're all there in the store, but they're at the back end, uh, backyard of the store. So that doesn't reach the shelf. So that's what that's what we require in India. It's not required uh, in most of the places, but yeah, that's the kind of you know behavior we tackle. That's the kind of store personal behavior uh, we tackle in India. So that's how it. Uh, it so the job of the camera is to ensure that uh, the store self is full. Where... Self is full. Self is full every time. Okay. So what we used to have at past is that. Uh, what we used to have at first is that the store is having all the items. The store is having all the items. We ensure that you are from the POA that has been checked out. Fine. And then the warehouse have replenished the store. Over. We would, could be very satisfied. Yeah, we have got all the items. We have got all the items. That's not necessarily mean that we have got all the items on the shelf. 
<laughs> that's the kind of universe that will catch i hope it will give you probably a overall post, uh, overall feel that it's been replenished it will not give you accurate uh, figures right uh by the camera you are saying yeah no no accurate absolutely accurate absolutely okay okay, okay. there cannot be any any difference that is the way that is the exact way what we feed is that we feed about every items product dimensions in the in the our algorithm like if you were looking at this picture currently uh, what is the length breadth height and the color of this item and what is the self capacity all these things are been pro, in, is fed into the algorithm then the image captures image figures out what is the current quantity how much space is left so that pretty well figures out absolutely accurate this is not even 90% this is 100% it has to be 100% only and this okay. is okay no big deal i hope i'm clear with my example right guys yes cool so uh, sir for yeah. a typical camera how many shelves can it cover uh, in terms of like classification when you are doing it yeah again another good question uh, we try to uh, place uh, it in such a way it covers the maximum uh, place so you can see here this is this is taken from one camera image right so that's what it is but that doesn't mean that this is covering this guys not possible so this is typically covering this guys so not that not that every cell every item has to be uh, camera covered it all depends upon the criticality because hardware and software comes at a cost so that and that's the kind of city you decide how much investment do i require so especially on the critical items it has been covered and such things have been done and uh, the pentagram part that i have mentioned here smart cells there are a lot of things not only about this camera part but also we have got sensors which i shall discuss when i shall discuss the iot part uh, but in the planogram part now that also is kind of integrated with this uh, camera so it pretty well uh, tells in an intelligent manner that yeah so what would be the best way to put the things and given the picture given the real image not a kind of hypothetical that we used to have previously uh, you must have seen the planogram if you just google it you will see the planogram images uh, and they are pretty hypothetical like uh, they create some boxes with some red blue green color and say that yeah this might look good but that's not real but with the ai we make it real making no. sense guys yes sir yes cool cool so yeah we discussed this so you know the best part uh, it is not only about this is pretty pretty easy but this is something you know uh, we really worked hard like to capture the image emotions from the from the face that what is the current state and uh, please remember what cups up what pops up is this word called happy uh, but at the back end we really create the scores we really create the scores of happiness and then uh, depending on the depending on the score we just attach these words because ultimately this is coming to a kind of business guy right business guys don't create about what is the score 2.3 mean or 4.6 mean on a 10 point scale or a 5 point scale so we give the words but yeah words can be happy joy elated or frustrated whatever there can be several words you know and we attach the words to the scores but the beauty that is again an easy job relatively but i just told you but the beauty or the critical job is to figure out that what is that score from this uh, facial recognition even even uh, you'll be surprised to know uh, though i have not done i just read the news i think yesterday or a couple of days back even from your uh, facial recognition i can figure out or that i can figure out uh, what is your political inclination can you imagine can you imagine even your political inclination whether you are kind of uh, a rightist or a left liberal uh, it can be figured out which is uh, of course i understood the trick when i read it and that's possible no big deal so yeah when the customer is browsing uh, it figures out who this customer is yeah jan is uh, browsing through the products of our evening wear and jackets prefers fox fur and fake leather so that's what it is it pretty well figures out what she is looking for and suppose 
if it is required for a salesperson uh, to approach this kind of customer, his or her question, uh, first question should be, ma'am or sir, what are you looking for? Uh, no. That means that you give me the information. So that's a lot of headache, right, for any customer. I have to explain. So no explanation required. If a salesperson approaches this kind of customers, he or she would be pretty learned or educated about the customer's need, want, preferences, past history, and uh, most importantly, the purchasing power, most importantly. So yeah, according to the right person will approach with the right information, right product. So the kind of sales is done in a minute. I hope I'm clear, right? Yes. Yeah, in this online, I have to continuously ask it because uh, in the class, I can always look at the face and that face will tell me, right? Uh, through my AI eyes that yes, you understood or not understood, but in the online, I have to continuously ask you, understood? Am I clear? So please bear with me if I'm repeatedly asking you for a reason, of course. Now, uh, that's what exactly I mentioned about the purchasing power. So say Laura is here. It figures out exactly how many times how loyal Laura is. She is a pretty old customer, right? Visit number is 90 and purchasing power is uh, $450. Not bad, not bad. Whereas the mark is pretty new to this store. Visit number is two and last spent was $230. This is visit number 75, Jeff. Last spent was 304. This guy, somebody asked me, that was a new customer. Yeah, that guy is unknown. So sorry. Uh, they cannot figure it out. This guy is with number seven, but uh, Tiller, right? Tiller Hill. Uh, and uh, uh, last spent was over 30 only. So not a very lucrative customer from a store point of view. So that exactly is when you know, Tiller uh, customized uh, for, the, for the store business about who these customers are. So Claudia is coming out and this store owner has got a very clear idea. That was the last visit, last purchase, pink boots. Shoe size was seven. I mentioned you, right? They have got every information, your shoe size to apparel and whatnot. So only thing what is required that who you are, the moment that has been, you know, figured out. So all the information are at the fingertip. Clear, right? Any question? No. Cool. So let's move to air wear. I'm sure. Do you use, I'm sure many of you use in today's world, right? Air wear. Forget about retail, otherwise also, right? Do you use it? So virtual reality. Yeah, augmented reality, virtual reality, do you use it? Those I devices suggest... are pretty costly. No, 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 no. Hey, right, come no. on, come on, man, come on. Nothing like that. See, I'm talking about the devices. What are you talking about, man? I'm a, I'm a big fan. And what do you know, I'm a, a, one of my hobby is stargazing, right? From my childhood only, not only from this age. From my childhood, I look at the stars. Um, at that time, my parents used to help me out to figure out what the stars are. And I still look, but I'm now very, you know, I do it in a very educated way. Not that, uh, so what happens is that I have got so many apps like Stargazer. You just Google it, the Stargazing apps. And if you look at the star, it will pretty well tell you uh, what the particular star is. Uh, if you just focus your camera towards the star. And even in that broad daylight, right? It need not, that's the important thing. Not not that it has to be at the night only. Of course, it can work at night if you have a very good camera on your phone, even in broad daylight, even if the stars are not visible. And even if you can see something else in front of you, say a mobile tower is there. If you look, just, you know, look out of your window or uh, for me, it is the mountains. I stay at mountains. I don't know where. Yeah, whatever I'm looking at. Now you will find that the same, uh, same structures are there but you will see that uh, what the stars are located behind it or on the top of it and what's their name, what's the location and what frequency it moves. So that's augmented reality, right? Am I making sense what I'm saying? That you can all use, that you can, that's a lot of fun. That's a very educated way. Yes, okay. the thing. There were even games also like- Yeah, Pokemon even games also. Yeah, Pogo is there. Yeah, absolutely. 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 So the point is that, and. Then I use multiple apps because in research, if you are into research, you shouldn't, uh, otherwise also, you shouldn't rely on one app's capability. So use multiple apps, track that, compare that, whether uh, everybody's in sync or not, uh, whether they're giving the same information or not, what is the kind of difference, what is the exact difference, question that. So a lot of research you can do by yourself. So the power of AR is tremendous, tremendous. So 
uh, and it's not costly at all in today's world. These are all AI, for example, face recognition. I'm sure those who are using Facebook, uh, they know that Facebook does does it so easily. You just you know upload a photo with a lot of friends. You need not tag them uh, by yourself manually. Uh, Facebook can automatically uh, recognize who the friends are, and that's uh, apparently that's free of cost. So that is not free. You are the product in Facebook, uh, but uh, apparently that's free of cost. So same here. AR. So all these technologies are free, by the way, these days. Don't think that you have to spend anything. You don't spend anything, anything. And apparently free, of course. Whenever something comes, nothing is free, but you will become the product. But uh, keeping that philosophy aside, uh, it's free. Uh, even in uh, Lenskart in India, you have used it, or even if you have not used it, you know it, right? How it works. You can choose uh, what kind of spectacle frame suit uh, your face the best, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's the RVR. So this is the kind of picture I have shown for the uh, IKEA store. So you have your uh, uh, drawing room, and it's not that you have to imagine. If I put this green sofa on my drawing room, will it look good? How will it look with my wall color? No imagination requirement that can easily be placed on your drawing room. And you can pretty well see how it fits. And not only how it looks, but also the fitment is a kind of very important part. Uh, if I put it, and then how much uh, open space, because in a room, uh, not only the furniture is important, but also the open space is important. So that also you can figure out uh, from this kind of apps. So yeah, it's, it's pretty cool, I guess. You try using it, you will love it. You will love using it. Um, now that's been done in a, in a, within a store itself, not that its applications are just limited to uh, this kind of stuff. So from the home, you can figure out that how it will feel. But if you are in a store, uh, so you can filter by special offer, what are the different alerts it is generating, what kind of offers are currently going on. You can pretty well figure it out, right? Mm -hmm. So, so many offers are going on so many products, not possible. Uh, not possible either to, you know, remember, and if you remember, then comparing across the offers, pretty difficult. So that's how that's how things work. And this is primarily been done in US. Uh, of course, I'm sure India is only at max five years behind, not more than that, uh, not more than that for sure. Uh, so these things you will see in India in five years. But yeah, in US, it's pretty standard. Those who have visited, you must be all knowing. Is pretty standard. Yeah, you have to just focus your camera, and uh, you can pretty well say that 25% off on this gens, 35% uh, off on this price, 60% off on this materials. This is $59. Uh, you can get it. This you can customize the colors. Maybe the store is only displaying one color, but then they can pretty well tell you, hey man, I have got these another four colors at my. Uh, back end of the store. I hope I'm clear, right? Any question? No. Cool. So yeah, not only about not only about what are the offers going on, suppose you are looking for something. So again, as I mentioned that even this one also helps in the store navigation. So there are multiple things, multiple things work in tandem as I told you, even when I shall discuss automation, I shall tell you how the robots uh, help in navigation. Uh, even this one also, if you are looking for serial and then uh, that will help you with navigating. Yeah, you just take the left, first left or second left and you will reach the store or the shelf that is selling the serials. And suppose you are on a store, it can, this is, you must have all experienced. Uh, yeah, you can pretty well figure out that what the shopping center is, how many meters away, in which floor this coffee shop is, in which floor this fashion shop is. So yeah, in which floor this bar is, restaurant and bar is. So everything is at your fingertip. Uh, it's coming up very fast. This is we call technically the smart mirror. Let's look at this lady. She's not wearing this dress. She is thinking of what kind of dress she can think all these things are there and she can choose and it will uh, it will show that how she will look with this attire same for this one and uh, with this dress if she chooses then there are multiple colors she has chosen the green color how will the green color will look on her so in that way depending on the color this much self uh, is 
the camera is there and it will just you know figure out that with particular dress uh, shoots are the best making sense guys questions no good uh, i'm just assuming that these are uh, you were acquainted with this thing for the first time right you didn't know it right otherwise it shouldn't be a kind of reputation is there any ethical issue in this particular thing this particular thing no ethical issue this particular thing no ethical issue let me tell you where the ethical issues come and uh, it's it's pathetic it's pathetic as far as india is concerned honestly you have got you have got no privacy let me very put it in very blunt way that is no privacy unfortunately what kind of soap even you are using in your bathroom i can know that thing unfortunate it is very unfortunate no pleasure in knowing that thing but that's the power of data uh, that gives yeah as far as uh, ideally ideally one cannot know one should not know uh, that they should not breach the privacy uh, uh, but these are all on the pen and paper uh, a reality is something uh, very 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 different unfortunately unfortunately it all i should i can only tell you one thing you are all party professionals it all depends on your value system your ethics uh, changing the system is a is a big thing but uh, we can start at least by changing ourselves at least i in my professional world i always ensure whenever i get a work any assignment i ensure that things are pretty clean if it is if it is not neat i just don't touch it if i feel that the data that have been given to me are uh, really not something i should uh, touch then i don't touch it uh, or or i just say that very frankly when uh, there are better guys who can do justice to this thing i have got enough business to take care man thank you so much i wish you all the best that's all you cannot change anybody at least i don't try you can of course but i don't try but then uh, you can always refrain from uh, doing shabby things shabby affairs which is pretty common absolutely common especially in ai world there is nothing called privacy that word is not in the dictionary to be very honest sure sir okay so with that let me move to iot internet of things you know this guy who this chap is what does that i do what does it drink eat consume and throws away you know this guy any idea so pretty simple pretty simple if you are not aware it's pretty simple in the sense that uh, uh nowadays every device every device uh, there's a sensor to it sensors attached to it it started very long ago quite long ago even rfid you know from the second world war also was a kind of i would say not exactly the iot in today's form in no way but it still had uh, the the presence uh, from that day and then of course it evolved with time uh, so uh, now what is this electronic devices uh, in the store are been attached to the shopping carts wheel baskets hand baskets and which figures out typically that what is the position in the real time collecting the complete journey of each customer in the supermarket so that's how it happens so as i mentioned about the smart self right so uh, professor you asked me the question i think uh, that whether they can find out accurately how many products are there or not so one thing is that camera is one part on the top of that we have also got the shelf weight sensors so we have got pretty clear idea that what is the weight of each of these products and if a product or two products goes away what would be the weight so that's another way and then that matches with the camera data so accuracy is 100% and uh, yeah so so as you can see here i have given the exact images how things are been attached in the shopping cart you can see here right so this is the iot devices these are the these are the all the devices it it whenever the person takes it through the store throughout the store rather and walks around it pretty well captures uh, through this device as well where the person is so there are multiple ways to capture you know and uh, that's why uh, privacy or all those things is a myth unless you are really educated to hide your identity which of course i do uh, in multiple ways not the incognito by the way <laughs> by the way don't think at all that i am using incognito mode in my windows nobody can understand come on that's the stupidest thing huh? don't think incognito doesn't come. that does a lot of things 
but there are other smarter ways. Okay, so that's IoT. Any any question on the IoT part before I move to automation? Uh, what kind of gateways are being used uh, in terms of handling these uh, sensors? So there might be plethora of sensors which you would have put. So Correct. Any, any specific gateways which we are using? To handle so in much. most cases, in most cases, uh, all these uh, all these uh, retailers used to have their own gateways. That's very important. Uh, they don't want to have a kind of third party vendor, which is a kind of standard. They want to customize it for them. So I uh, think since things are at a very nascent stage, they cannot take a chance. So uh, they want to make it made for them. Yeah. And by the way, somebody was asking me about the cloud and the fog at that time. I couldn't, uh, I told I should going to tell you in the IoT slide. Here it is. So in this fog platform, you have got the local data, events, the rules, analytics, relation. In the cloud platform, you have got the sensor, uh, compute, and big data repository. And they continuously talk to each other. Are you saying that each stored data is a fog data and collectively all the stores together would be a cloud data? Correct, correct. You're absolutely correct, Professor. Sir, uh, my my doubt is on the cost. So, if let's yeah. say, uh, you know, not it, not uh, not such big big stores like Big Bazaar. Let's say some medium stores, not Kirana stores. So, can those stores use all these technologies? How would how much would it cost for them? No, no, of course, of course, this is a very valid concern, not only for you, but for even for the CEO of a company, for a CTO of a company, for everyone. By <laughs> price to batao that everyone asks. Right? It it doesn't come cheap. It doesn't come cheap. Uh, it doesn't come cheap at all. Uh, for the simple reason, see, it, these technologies are not something you know, ten years, twenty years old. To be very honest, these technologies are pretty new. Especially when I'm talking about the AI technologies capabilities, these are pretty new capabilities. So that comes at a cost. Fortunately, the return is also high. Fortunately, the return is equally high. Uh, you can think of a business, there are hundreds of examples, but since LensCut in India is known to you all, uh, the entire business is surviving on this AR VR capabilities, right? So even if the cost is, or cost of adapting the technology is high, but you can see the uh, power, power of running an entire company based on that. So there is a lot of companies which are adapting it, comes at a high cost. Uh, unfortunately, it's not that uh, cheap in today's world. Uh, which time, like any technology, like any technology, uh, when it gets old, when it gets, uh, uh, the cost comes down. That's how it works. Sure, Suppose sir. I uh, invest uh, on a POS machine at the retail store. You know? Correct. That data in itself can be of a lot of significance. Or if I can encourage the retailer to start keeping a POS machine. The POS machine is at no, that is kind of pretty old, I would say. No, see, old. at least, see, today the biggest challenge in India, what uh, I think uh, the question that also came in uh, is the fact that how, you know, retailers in India are looking at it. For a market like India, which is so fragmented, even hmm. a POS machine can actually bring in some control to how we look at the... True, true, true. No, the reason why I'm nothing. asking you is this is that I remember mm -hmm. that about, I think about three years back, mm -hmm. we were in uh, a Western UP village mm -hmm. and we saw that most Kirana stores in those villages had mm -hmm. a, a POS machine. Actually, it was not a POS machine. This mm -hmm. one, Levers had actually put up these machine boxes inside these stores mm -hmm. where every purchase, you know, it could be for a Levers brand or a non-Levers brand, mm -hmm. but was being registered on that machine. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the month or week or all, the Divas guy came in and he collected the data hmm. and he hmm. took it away. So I'm saying that, you know, even, I mean, that might be a little different, but then the fact of the matter is that even a POS machine point. could bring in some control somewhere. Absolutely. That's the starting point, I would say. That's the first step one should take. That's the first step. As you rightly mentioned, yeah. But this, what I'm talking or discussing today is primarily about the modern trade. Yeah, the dynamics of these two things are very, these two groups are very different. Modern trade and the uh, rural marketing or the Kirana stores uh, are, dynamics are very different. And that ecosystem is different, environment is different. So the technology is applicable here 
we cannot say or expect that the same technology will be applied or applicable uh, they are as well overnight so yeah that's or perhaps that probably the reason why we are unable to actually get uh, you know our intelligence market intelligence on the rural market maybe we need a different kind of a technology maybe some somebody has not thought about it but i think we would need some kind of technologies to you know understand that market and perhaps the reason why penetrations in those markets have been so limited is because of lack of market intelligence i mean i'm just trying to understand you you are very correct you are very correct and answer lies in technology that is for sure the answer lies in technology that is for sure it is a technology that will give you a very precise without any human intervention without any human error uh, uh, the numbers that's that's what it is because i have seen the kind of marketing research that gets done in the uh, throughout india now what is of course we have a, another team who will validate the data one team to collect the data they will yeah. just yes. sit under a tree lit a cigarette and will fill up the forms by themselves that's how it happens so and uh, if we do the analytics on the top of that data you can imagine what kind of results it can give so that's why i'm saying the technology is the answer get rid of all the human intervention and let the technology say the simple technology let me give you a couple of technology which i have not mentioned in this slides simple technologies say the infrared rays if you just put those irrs in the store gates it will capture how many store visits are taking place how many persons are entering the stores and exiting the stores it can capture that let me give you a second example a wifi tracker again that's that placed on the ceilings that can pretty well because your wifi your your mobile phones or any or it can be tablet any smart devices for that matter always tries to capture the wifi the moment it hits not that it has to connect but it hits and trying to connect it will figure out that how many uh, how many smart devices are within the stores so these are all the smart technologies that can be used not a kind of big ai or which are required which is not big in terms of technology but requires definite investments but these are very small things but can give you a lot of data and even some capabilities some some uh, back end technologies are there capable to figure out say if uh, my mobile is trying to hit a wifi uh, and it can figure out that who is who is not only the device name but also a lot of other data comes which we call the metadata lot of other data uh, that comes up say for instance just i'm just you know site tracking suppose if you upload a facebook photo or any photo for that matter in social media you are just thinking about you are uploading uh, that photo or or your your happy moment but you are you are just throwing a lot of thousands of metadata say what kind of mobile device you are using okay what is the model number what is the camera capability uh, what kind of operator lot of lot of data you are just throwing just by uploading one picture one image so you must be cognizant of uh, while you were while you were all social media savvy or all the technology savvy you are all tech savvy i'm sure the current generation is very tech savvy but uh, being cognizant is very important you must be knowing what you are doing sir uh, uh, let me find me i have that what question on beacon and artificial intelligence Yeah. So, so um, let, I love both, the background sound. <laughs> by the way, please go ahead. Yeah. So uh, let's say on beacon and artificial and both. What is the capacity like? Uh, like for for a country like India and the population. So will the beacon device be able to uh, you know capture everyone? On uh, and same with facial recognition. So what I want question is on capacity. See capacity. it's not a problem to be very on because most of the technology currently is scalable that's the word i mentioned in my last class yesterday as well that's not a problem problem is that even with the latest technology you have found in this picture something somebody is completely unknown so the, yeah this is this is a kind of challenge uh, not that everyone not that everyone uses the smart device or everyone reveals their profile everyone has a social media presence so most of us but still there are folks who intentionally or whatever be the reason don't uh, don't reveal their true identity so that could be a problem uh, otherwise otherwise if your question is that can it handle the number of people answer is yes that's not a problem that's not a problem at all uh, uh, any number of persons that can enter the store uh it can handle that capacity that technology has the capability 
Okay, so let's move to the automation part. Yeah, IoT is done. Let's move to automation. Automation is something you know uh, that's there uh, for quite some time. Of course, it has evolved. Uh, it has evolved significantly. I'm sure you have. I have not attached any videos here uh, in these slides, but uh, for the simple reason that uh, showing it off uh, through online sessions uh, may disturb it. It might not transmit it to you in the way I want you to show the synchronization of the sound and you know, it doesn't take place, but you can always Google, uh, you are in the YouTube, you can go and look at the Amazon warehouses, uh, how it operates, or you must have seen, I'm sure you must have seen in the supply chain classes. Uh, even within the store or in the warehouses, this entire, entire thing uh, is been automated. It would have been not possible humanly to handle this kind of the, the humongous task that they do, that they have to continuously do 24 by 7 without an error that would not have been humanly possible uh, without the intervention of these uh, autonomous mobile robots or EMRs, what we say. And uh, the robotic storage is separate, which I shall discuss, but uh, AMRs play a very critical role, very critical role uh, to uh, move the inventory or the sorting the inventory or picking for that matter. So these are the robotic store assistants, as you can see uh, in the stores. If you are looking for, hey, where can I find the ice cream? So they will take you, hey, come with me. And we'll take the, say, the first left and they'll show you, not only escort you, but also show you. That's how things go. Yeah, that's how the robots move in the store and they can help you in figuring out that where, what kind of products you are looking for. And of course, as I mentioned you, that is not the only thing, a lot of, lot of other things. So with that AR, VR, everything, is there. the entire, entire catalog is uploaded there, the kind of promotions are there, you can filter it, what kind of promotion, you want something, say, uh, what you do with Amazon, be more, more uh, you can relate pretty well. You want uh, in the price of say 5,000, 10,000 rupees, some product. Uh, and you want that, that comes with a discount of say 20% and above. So ideally the product should be on a range of uh, 15,000 and so. So that product you want in that budget. So that's the kind of complex uh, query. You can still do that complex query uh, in this kind of machines. And that will tell you exactly where those products are located. So that's the beauty. That's the beauty it throws for the customers. That's why, that's why it's so popular. That's why things are being adapted because it's not just, you know, uh, giving benefit to the store owners not just the retail, immense power to customer. If you are smart enough to use it, that's very important. Not Am I audible to you guys? Yeah, I think your uh, screen got... Uh... Okay, 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 okay. Now it's visible, right, or not? No, not yet. Not yet? Wait a second. I hope it should be visible now. Yeah, it's now visible. Uh, is it visible now? Yeah, yeah. And I was audible, right? Yeah, you were audible. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, okay. So yeah, so what I was saying is that you can even run very complex queries, very complex queries like uh, what you can get uh, at what particular price points, what is the maximum discounts? What is the exact color? And you can have as many variables as possible. You can run complex queries and these robots or the interactive media that I'm going to discuss next is going to tell you or give you that for your results. Not only for the results, the robots will actually escort you to the aisle and then help you in purchasing in the sense that you can even purchase with that robot and take it out of the store. Not that you have to go to the check-in counter. That's also even possible. That's exactly is my next slide on. Yeah, I'm sure you all have heard about Amazon Go, right? Yes. Yeah, so you have to just go to the Amazon Go, use the Amazon Go app to enter. That's in Cupertino. 
uh, now it has been spread it started in cupertino now it is across the us so no big deal uh take what you want and that's it we're done you can just check in and check out so that's the beauty uh, entirely automated no human beings are required that's the future that's the future now obviously for a country like india a lot of you can see adapting techno technology is not a challenge here challenge here is that if we bring these things lot of job loss a lot of other concerns come, socio-economic concerns will come. So that's a separate debate, discussion altogether. But but why I'm raising that issue is that I raised that issue in the AI also when I talk about infringement analytics. The dynamics of this country is very different. The dynamics of the country is very, very, very different. So the application of technology, adoption of technologies, how it will be done, whether it will be done or not, it's not just the cost. The environmental factors are very critical. So we have to be really be sensitive, not only be cognizant, uh, uh, knowing is one thing, but really become sensitive about the issues, uh, not just because you know, technology comes at a cheap cost, we can have it, it doesn't happen like that. You have to be really sensitive about the ground realities and then take the measures that's very, very, very critical, which which most of the, most of the bureaucrats, technocrats, uh, all across the country, they are missing it, the ground realities, that's the concern, pain point, I would say. So be very, very sensitive about that part. So that's about the automation part. Any questions on the automation before I move to the last part in active media? Just wanted to understand that uh, what yes. kind of data gets thrown back, if you can show some uh, sample data, because ultimately when uh, these uh, participants in this class today, when they typically you know go back and start working, it's the data that gets thrown back mm -hmm. to them. So would you be able to share some representative data that so these are exactly the data so whenever a camera that's the kind of data we get what is the gender what is the age and then from the we calculate the emotions what is the time that person spent in the store another data point then comes that what is the visit number what was the last spent uh, these are the data points so you already have seen say this is the first data is the gender is the second data point emotion third the time in store four data point, the data point was the visit number, last spent is the another data point. So that's the data points to continuously get. So with such large data I that see. gets yeah. generated, what are the typical, uh, uh, you know, the softwares or, uh, you know, programming that you are using for all practical purposes? Well, uh, two answers to it, uh, two answers in the sense that, uh, of course, it all depends on the, depends on the, uh, on the retailer or the or the or the in our language is the vendor uh, uh, and but but uh, but uh, the two answers to it is that it should be either the proprietary software or the open source ones so as far as the proprietary software uh, there are uh, uh, oracle does a very good job over there and there is ibm as well uh, they have their own software for it uh as far as the open source ones are concerned uh of course i could mention about the in the proprietary SaaS as well uh is that they have sent the note from the SaaS, if you recall uh so these are the uh let's say the proprietary software as far as the open source is concerned uh r is not that much but python takes care r is still been you can be used but yeah our enterprise version not the one that you use generally for your research uh r python uh uh, Scala, Spark, yeah, these are the languages that have been used. Uh, for, for AI, it is TensorFlow primarily. Python and TensorFlow both, but primarily TensorFlow. So what I'm going to do is that maybe the way I send the reading material, uh, today I'm going to send you uh, uh, what are the proprietary software and how they are uh, treating this data. I shall send you the reading material on that. I hope that would help the guys. Yeah, I think that should do. Yeah, I shall send you. It's on me. So that's the automation part. Last, we move to the interactive media. Interactive media comes in two ways. One is, of course, the uh, the in-store digital media, right? You can pretty well select. Not that every, uh, not that, suppose if I give the example of this mobile store, not that typically all the mobile uh, mobiles uh, literally have to be displayed in the way you can see currently. Uh, 
if you just select one and then you can you know, dive deep further that way you do in a website but in a much more much more uh, sophisticated way you can pretty well see if you want to test the camera it can test it it can it can have everything it can have uh, all the specifications you can test but everything in a kind of interactive in digital media you can literally speak by the way uh, not only touch you can literally speak hey how many mobiles you are having in the price range of 75000 to 1 lakh for instance so between 1 lakh to 1 lakh 50000 for instance and that would display hey i have got this speaker what are you having in that you know, in apple or this particular thing so that would uh, particularly typically that way you interact with alexa as simple as that so it would uh, typically you can touch feel speak talk and then that becomes a kind of immersive experience for the customer. customers enjoy it that i always say that you know it's not only about the from the retailer's point of view but also on the customer's point of view they do enjoy it look the guy even if uh, suppose uh, he or she is passing through the through the uh, through the street and this is the kind of shop window this guy has not even entered the store even from the shop window not everything you know you cannot uh, display on a mannequin right mannequin uh, there is a space limitation how many mannequins can you place on a store window right two or three four at max but uh, you have got a kind of uh, interactive uh, media uh, facing the customer on the street then that customer can pretty well uh, interact try taste everything even without entering the store that's the beauty and then uh, at one moment then you will entice send the message hey man now this is what. so that's the beauty of interactive in-store digital media any question no i think it's fine okay cool now the last part i would uh, i would touch in the in the okay. yeah you have a question Yeah, go ahead. No, I think there is just a sound probably. Okay, sure. You carry on. Sure. So the last thing about this uh, interactive media is a kind of use case uh, is about uh, better interactivity. So now, uh, Sita too, I have told you about uh, other than the augmented reality part where, where, you can, where you can taste how the IKEA furniture will look in your room, in your drawing room, living room. Uh, most of the things are in store. Now, the other thing which uh, came up heavily, uh, especially uh, especially uh, keeping all these digital medias uh, uh, out, was the uh, purchasing through the television. And so there is a segment, there is a segment who, uh, who are really literally uh, spend hours uh, on TV and they, they love purchasing through TV. So uh, that's that's the kind of uh, customers. Uh, also, the retailers cannot just uh, rule them out. So uh, to uh, to utilize as, or to leverage that segment. So there are a lot of home shopping network is uh, only one of them. That that is the kind of this use case. But HSN is not definitely the best for that matter. There are better stuffs available. But then uh, there are a lot of interactive application for. Uh, for your TV sets, right? Where you can pretty well search. Uh, you can you can uh, browse through them. You can even compare. You can even compare. You can speak. You can you can look at the current offers, promotions. You can look at the consumer reviews and uh, again compare across the customer reviews for the couple of products here, four products even, and then. Uh, Everything, everything can take place. You are just, you know, resting on your sofa, resting on your couch, and then uh, uh, through the into the TV, you can you are doing uh, through your remote. You, you can actually not only browse and compare, uh, you can actually purchase the product. That's the beauty. Uh, so that's the kind of uh, solution differentiation, uh, and then uh, that's the business benefits. Like it's single solution framework using all the technologies which is applicable to all the platforms and, uh, and analytics integration is another very important part. So uh, all these all these platforms that you are using, uh, be it a digital platform or even the, even the TV platform for that matter, uh, the data gets captured, obviously, and uh, analytics works on the top of that. So yeah, open for questions. Just uh, one question. 
it's not related to retail in uh, person but uh, the thing is like uh, if you talk about like instagram filters yep so they uh, kind of uh, draw a lot of engagement uh, correct for the consumer for the user correct but, uh, does it have any other like marketing implication uh, apart from you know engagement obviously 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 so uh, the moment you were saying uh, engagement by the way have you have you have you heard the name of sushwa sulpa give me a minute just give me one minute to check and we go to all and to Is the Netflix? I'm forgetting that. Well, we we've lost you. Okay, am I not audible to you? Yeah, for the uh, since the time Rajiv asked you the question, uh, I think after that we kind of lost you. If you can repeat that part. Okay, sure, 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 sure. So what I was saying is that uh, uh, let me ask you back. Uh, have you watched a documentary in Netflix social uh, network? Yeah, we did that. Social dilemma. The social, social dilemma. dilemma. Social, social dilemma. dilemma. Yes, sir. So dilemma, so the dilemma, I guess, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so that was you know that that answers this question. So whenever you are finding that the customer experience is engaging, the customer experience is improving, the consumer engagement is taking place, all your data, the more the time you spend. By the way, all of you, if you have not watched till now, if there are a few, this uh, docu. Uh, I would say docu drama. That's a better way to explain it. Social dilemma. All of you must watch. Must watch. That's something you know should be a kind of textbook for you, especially in today's generation. So you must watch it, and there lies the answer that whenever you are engaging, be it through a filter, as somebody asked me the question in Instagram, or by this way or that way, the more the time you spend, the more data actually you are throwing, the more data you are throwing about yourself. to the entire world entire world means all the marketers all the data hungry marketers they are just waiting for you these are all the ways these are all the ways to tantalize you to excite you to throw more data about you the more the data you uh, the more the time you spend through filters as somebody mentioned or there are several ways just browsing whatever you are actually constantly throwing data now how the marketers leverage it the more you throw the data the more they will target the advertisements for you they will keep sending you uh, the messages uh, that would be more relevant to you so that you keep on purchasing so that's the kind of cycle so yeah that's the kind of marketing answer to it am i audible yes sir yeah. and am i clear if i am audible <laughs> am i clear yes sir yes okay so one task this sunday or this saturday uh, yeah you you must you know you must uh, watch that uh, uh, uh was the social dilemma that's very important any other question you know long time back i don't know whether you have seen this movie tohin it's called the net it stars yeah. sandra bullock yeah 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 so that yeah. kind of gave you an early signs of how you know you are prone i mean this must be what uh, 90s movie got it give you a right. sense of what social dilemma actually is social dilemma is probably more the reality check and uh, but the net correct. that movie kind of gives you a little bit of idea about correct correct another web series i would recommend uh, those who are not on netflix but on other time i'm a big fan by the way i keep watching them uh, mr robot uh, have you watched it any of you watch mr robot i have heard about it but i'm yet to once you watch start watching a series then there's so much of time you spend on that because you obviously want to see the next one yeah and and and, and that's of course a kind of uh, worth spending the time so i uh. now that you are yeah. recommending so, it robot, have... you, so uh, uh mr robot you all watch again for the sake of this class only it is not about your entertainment uh, 
for this class only. You will understand that how you can, what kind of data you were actually throwing every time you are using social media or any media for that matter, and how these things can be hacked very easily. Uh, is of course ethical hacking as well involved, and a lot of other issues. But yeah, watch this kind of movies uh, that would help you. Or for the interaction, as I mentioned, interactive media, you must have watched the movie called Her, H-E-R, Her. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's so a that great movie. Great yeah. movie, amazing, amazing. Walk in Phoenix. Yeah, amazing. So, yeah. Watch this kind of movies that would give you a lot of perspective. That's very important. It's not about entertainment. It is not, honestly, it's not about getting entertained. Uh, for that purpose, our Salman Khan is there. <laughs> but... Uh, it will give you a wider perspective about what's happening around you, uh, what kind of, how the technology is actually ruling the world. We are just the pawns in the hands of technology. And then once you understand that thing, then comes your next move that, okay, if this is the situation, then how I can master the technology. Using social media is not that you are mastering it. You are just, you know, becoming a prey of that, of that, of that entire tool. But suppose, let me give you, ask you a question. Suppose Facebook will show you what you want to show, right? Or what actually generates your likes, comments, all those. It will show you only those things, right? That that you must be knowing. That's a kind of simple algorithm. What will actually excite you, where your interest lies, what your favorite friends, favorite topics, areas, it will keep showing you that thing. So that means what? It will typically will not show you uh, so many things, what, and your interest will not go to there. Now, how you can beat that algorithm, how you can use social media, but still beat that algorithm, that would be your smart move. So think in this line, how I can beat the algorithm of, uh, of, of each of these social media, how I can be smarter than them. They are very smart, but you have to be really smarter than them. Then only using it makes sense. Otherwise, otherwise you become a kind of uh, pawn or your prey or a person who is constantly giving them the data for their benefit, not for your benefit. Though you will apparently think that, yes, I'm getting benefited because I'm getting likes, comments, and whatsoever. But that's not it is. So think in this line that what kind of algorithms do they use? How do they get my data? And how do I beat their algorithm? What will be my algorithm? And how I can be in the system and still beat the system? And that's not only for social media. That can be not anything. You cannot, you can only beat the system if you are in the system and then you can beat the system. That's the kind of, you know, social strategy you can have. Not only in the digital, but also offline. Thanks, Tuin. <clears throat> Anything else, Raghav? Yeah. No, Raghav sir. and uh, no, Rajiv, uh, anybody else? Ayush? I think what was recommended in the social dilemma to deal with these issues is to, instead of going through your recommendations, you search for something every single time you want to look for it, instead of just going through your recommendations. Since it causes true. polarization, you don't see other perspectives. True, 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 Absolutely. true. Absolutely. Thank you, Monal. I think that's a, that's something very interesting. Okay, guys. Then have a wonderful Sunday. Enjoy your Sunday. Watch movies. Get widen your perspectives. We'll again catch up tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. Thank you. Thank you, Doreen. Thank you. Thank you, Bye-bye. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.